And so why don't you give us your pitch for how you would do things differently if you were uh, mm -hmm. appointed to be elected to be executive vice president of the NRA? Well, the most important thing is you have to get back to restoring that trust and confidence of the membership in the organization. You have to get back to people understanding that this organization is going to be focused on honest, uh, honor, integrity, and character, that we're going to be good stewards of the uh, donor money, and we're going to get back to those core competencies. The National Rifle Association was founded coming out of the Civil War because uh, they saw an issue with marksmanship. And as a matter of fact, one of the first leaders was General Ambrose Burnside, the uh, the quote unquote hero of Antietam. So we've got to get back to the shooting sports. We've got to get back to the marksmanship programs, all of those things that are really the foundation and core of the National Rifle Association. We've got to make sure that we're doing what is necessary to protect the Second Amendment and making sure that we're standing and make and uh, ensuring that we have those uh, candidates that are running out there that will support protecting that. But we also have to do what is necessary to protect the gun manufacturing industry and also the financial services that are tied to the gun manufacturing industry. So it's important that we work with them as well and start looking at how we can develop the means by which we can protect them because what the left is trying to do is attack the system of the Second Amendment, not just going after uh, the ability to own the, the weapon, but going after the weapon, going after the ammunition, going after everything that they possibly can. So we have to be uh, more proactive instead of reactive and meeting them there. But I think without a doubt, the most important thing is that uh, you have to be in constant contact with what is going on with the people there, have those staff meetings, uh, sitting down and talking with your direct reports, and then also making sure that you have that, that strategy and that plan that people can see and understand and they know exactly where you're trying to take this organization. But without a doubt, we've got to get back to our core competencies. I think one of the things that hurt the National Rifle Association when they uh, tried to go into this carry guard uh, this insurance program, because the NRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. Of course, when you start to get into insurance, that's a for-profit thing. And that's where we got in trouble in the state of uh, New York. And so one of the main reasons that the NRA's revenues have fallen over the last several years is because their membership has fallen, mm -hmm. uh, even at a time where we've seen the creation of 13.5 million new gun owners, according yes. to you know the gun industry. Uh, and so how would you get those people back? How would you bring the people who've become skeptical of the NRA back into the fold? As, uh, That's what I'm saying. You have to eliminate that skepticism. People have to see and understand your reputation and that you are there to be a servant to them. And it's not about uh, self-service or it's not about special interest service, which I think uh, in many ways people are very concerned about that has happened in the National Rifle Association. They don't want to see a small little cabal of individuals that are determining the direction and also getting financial benefit thereof. They want to make sure that when they're donating their money, that their return of investment is on those core competencies, as I talked about, the programs that the National Rifle Association stands for, and also defense of the Second Amendment. So it's a trust and confidence issue. And uh, as far as transparency to the organization, bring that to members, how, how would you go about doing that? Well, uh, I think that you have to have that constant contact. Uh, one of the things I did when I was a member of Congress, at the end of every single week, I put out what I call the uh, the weekly sit rep. And those of us in the military, we know what that stands for, situation report. So I think it's important as the EVP is that you are constantly making sure that people understood the things that happened within that week, the decisions you had to make, and uh, what you're looking at doing in the following week. So no one is ever uh, under the suspicion that the NRA is going in a direction that they don't know or understand or don't agree with. And you have to have that uh, connection with them. I think one of the great things is to have a podcast like this where uh, members can dial in and ask questions of the EVP directly, have that maybe once a week or once every other week. 